Thursday, October 10, The Resurrection of Lazarus John chapter 11 is filled with sadness. The sad news of a dear friend's illness we read in chapter 11 verses 1 to 3. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Then there's the weeping over his death. In verses 19, And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. And verse 31, When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. And in verse 33, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her were also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. The sisters lament that Lazarus would not have died if Jesus had been present. We read about in verse 21, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. And also in verse 32, When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus' own tears in verse 35. Jesus wept. But Jesus had delayed two days before starting his journey to Lazarus, even indicating that he was glad that he had not gone earlier in verses 14 and 15. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. This action was not from any cold-heartedness. Rather, it was to reveal God's glory. By the time we get to John eleven seventeen to 27 Lazarus had been dead four days. John 11, beginning at verse 17, On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is come into the world. Lazarus had been dead four days. After four days, his body would already be rotting. And as Martha said, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days, in verse 39. No doubt, Jesus' delay only helped make the miracle that followed even more astonishing, to raise a rotting corpse. What more proof could Jesus have given that indeed he was God himself? And as God, as the one who had created life to begin with, Jesus had power over death. Thus, Jesus uses this opportunity, that of Lazarus's death, to reveal a crucial truth about himself. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. That's John eleven twenty five to 26. Read John 11, verses 38 to 44. What did Jesus do that supported his claim? John 11, beginning at verse 38. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. 
"'But, Lord,' said Martha, the sister of the dead man, "'by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days.' "'Then Jesus said, "'Did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God?' So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Just as Jesus showed he is the light of the world in John 8.12 and John 9.5 by giving the blind man sight in John 9.7, so here he raises Lazarus from the dead, as we've just read in verses 43 and 44 of chapter 11, demonstrating that he is the resurrection and the life, as he claimed in chapter 11, verse 25. This miracle more than any other, points to Jesus as the life-giver, as God himself. It provides strong support for John's theme that Jesus is the divine Son of God, and that, by believing, we can have life through him, as we read in chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. However, by the time we get to the end of this incredible story in John eleven forty five to 54 in which many who saw believed, as we saw in verse 45, a powerful but sad irony unfolds. Let's read those verses in John chapter 11, verses 45 to 54. Therefore many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing? they asked. Here is this man performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Then one of them, named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation, and not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God, to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on they plotted to take his life. Therefore Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the people of Judea. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the wilderness to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. Jesus shows that he can bring the dead back to life, and yet these men think that they can stop him by killing him. What an example of the foibles of humanity in contrast to the wisdom and power of God. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.